Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Design Now. Today we're going to be reviewing the Longer Nana Pro 12 Watt Laser Engraver. I'm sure you know how these things go by now. Longer sent this to me for free in exchange for an unbiased review, so please bear that in mind. There are a few packages available for this engraver. The one that I was sent was the standard package, which includes the Nana Pro, which is the 12 watt version. You also get the rotary accessory and you also get the slide extension accessory here. So we'll go over the main features, the unboxing, and then the pros and cons and my conclusion. Let's start with the features. I would say the thing that stands out to me the most is the fact that it's pretty small and light and it's got a nice carry handle on it. So it's obviously designed for portability. This does not weigh a lot at all. You can easily pick this thing up and carry it around. It has an engraving area of 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters, and you can expand that up to to 300 millimeters by 100 millimeters when you are using the slide extension here. It has engraving speeds of up to 5,000 millimeters per second, but realistically, with only 12 watts of power, you're probably gonna be running this between 300 to 600 millimeters per second. That may sound like a big difference from the claim speeds that they have on the website, but trust me, that is plenty fast enough and much faster than the typical gantry style laser engravers. It comes with a red plastic hood, which is flame retardant. There is a small twist and lock fan. There's nothing stopping you from printing your own twist and lock adapter to hook it up to your own fume extraction. And if you don't have a 3D printer or access to any of the tools and processes that you've seen on this channel, well, that is where the sponsor of today's video might be able to help. PCBWay offer manufacturing services from 3D printing to sheet metal bending. What's more is they have a huge range of material and finishing options available through all of their services. On top of that, they also have their own fast PCB etching services where you can design and print your own PCBs. Perfect for when you decide to make your own laser engraver. So head over to PCBWay.com today and see how they can help your next project. The hood is secured to the laser head with four magnets. I would have liked the magnets to be a little bit stronger. We'll see how well it holds onto the hood uh, later on in the video. You can connect to the Nano Pro via USB and also via Wi-Fi. It has a dual red dot focusing system, so you can focus with that, or there are a few manual alternatives. It does come with this wooden ruler, which is the exact height of the focus that you need. And I was actually using this quite a lot and it was quite, quite easy to, to use it. The hood itself is also the exact focusing distance. So the focusing distance is 151 millimeters. So if you line this up, the bottom of the hood to the lens here is the same as this ruler. So it does have some benefits. It also has some negatives, which I'll talk about later on in the video. This has a few helpful safety features as well. It has your, your typical uh, detection of movement while it is engraving. So it will shut off the laser if it notices that you've, you've kind of knocked it and it is quite sensitive with that. And then also there is a uh, temperature sensor as well. So if it detects that there is a fire, it will turn off the laser. So yeah, two very crucial safety features. Let's go through the unboxing and setting up. It was very, very easy. Essentially, this head is secured with just one bolt to this bracket and this arm, which has the motor and the uh, mechanism that raises the head up and down for focusing, is just secured to this plate with four screws. So it's very, very easy to put together. At the back of the laser head, you have the color-coded cable connections. And on the top of the handle, you have the on and off button. And I found putting together the accessories very easy as well. It's just a case of following the instructions and just essentially just screwing in a few bolts. Um, and that is really about it. The documentation, uh, the manual, is pretty good. One of, definitely one of the best I've seen from a Chinese company. The translations make sense and the images are nice and clear. Even better is that Longer also provide a complete video series which will go through the complete setting up of these machines and the accessories and also to get the basics set up within the various different software that the Longer Nano Pro supports. The Laser Nano Pro is compatible with Lightburn, which is what I was using the most to do this review. They also have their own Laser Burn app, and also you can use, I think, Laser Gerbil or just Gerbil. So after about 10, 15 minutes of setting this all up, I had it plugged into my laptop and I could start cutting. Let's go through the pros that I come across while I was reviewing this. So the first pro, as I've just said, is the setup. Quick and easy, good documentation. And I don't think people are gonna have too much issue with just getting this up and running and starting to cut things. Number two would be the engraving speeds. If you have never used a Galvo style laser engraver before, 
And by Galvo, I mean that it is using galvanometers, which are just essentially high speed mirrors, which are used to reflect the laser into the position on this laser bed at the bottom here, as opposed to a gantry, which is essentially moving the entire laser head around to cut and engrave material. The Galvo style is much, much faster. If you have never used one before and you're coming from a gantry machine, you will be blown away at how quick this thing can engrave. This is a little bit faster than the uh, the other Galvo machine I've tested, which is from Xtool. And this is a little bit faster than that. And obviously it does have a 12 watt laser. The, uh, the Xtool has a 10 watt. So that extra two watt does help you to just basically move that laser dot around and still maintain you know, some sort of mark on the material while you are engraving. The third pro is that it can engrave very fine details. Um, this is what you would expect from these style of machines. It has a dot size of I think about 0.06 millimeters, which is definitely one of the smallest that I have seen. It claims to have uh, to be able to reach a DPI, I think of 400 plus. Uh, a line interval of 0.06. In my testing, I found that I wasn't able to hit that. I, I think really you're probably looking at 0.08 to 0.1. Uh, for your line interval. Realistically, you're going to be hitting around about 300 DPI, which is still more than enough detail. You'd never really be needing to engrave things at 300 DPI, let alone 400 plus DPI. It's one of those things that, you know, companies claim on their sales page, but real world use of these things is not very much. But yeah, I really do like these uh, these Galvo style lasers. I'm not sure exactly what makes these style of engravers have a smaller dot size. Yeah, it definitely does result in finer engraving, um, especially when you're doing like fine details with, with like cards, for instance. I was cutting out a few uh, Christmas cards. The tiny details you can get with uh, these sort of dot sizes is really impressive. And the next pro for me would probably be, you know, the cost of this and, and the fact that you get two accessories with it. You can do a lot with this package. Uh, you've got the slide extension, which obviously allows you to do bigger batches of things. And also you've got the rotary engraving. So it means that you can engrave things like you know, tumblers and obviously cylindrical objects. So let's go over some of the cons. The first thing that stood out to me was the fact that it was quite wobbly just due to the nature of the fact that you've got this big head supported on this quite thin arm. You can see it does have some wobble to it. I don't think this actually impacts the use of the machine, but I guess for me, I'm just not used to having things, uh, having like so much play and, and giving them. The second con for me was the hood. This is probably the worst thing about this machine. So let's, let's go over what this hood does. So it is obviously fixed to the, the head with magnets. They are strong enough, like if you knock the table, for instance, you know, th this hood is not gonna fall off. But I mean, if you if you just knocked it a little bit, it, it could come off. The other issue that I had with this uh, hood is that if you do make your own adapter for this uh, twist and lock mechanism at the back, like if I use my hose and I connect it to it, the weight of the hose um, will actually just make the, the hood drop off. So really all you can do is use this tiny little fan here. What I've been doing is I've just been aiming the, uh, the hose for my fume extractor just close to that fan. Now when you've got this hood flat against some material, the fume extraction is good. The fan does actually do a good enough job of extracting the, the fumes. The issue that I have is that if you are using the accessories, you can't use this hood, um, especially with the slide extension. See, I think if this had a sliding, uh, a sliding cover, I could just use it much better. The other thing with this hood is that you can't slide it on and off. It has to come down and then you can take it away and it has to clear this this lens here. What that means is that you have to use the uh, the controls at the back here of the arm to move this up and down. And moving it up and down is actually pretty slow. Again, this really does hurt your productivity. If you are engraving something, you want to check that it's, you know, it's engraving okay, or maybe you want to swap out for a new batch, you got to press this button, you got to wait for it to lift up. So you just get that enough clearance that you can actually take off the hood and then you can obviously access the uh, the material. I think at the least it would have been good to just have some sort of you know clearance so you could just maybe pull this off sideways or at the front here. Another con is that this doesn't have an autofocus feature, which I, I'm seeing as being a common feature that is coming out with these new laser engravers. I'm not too sure it's that important, but I thought I would mention it. I do actually prefer manual methods of focusing. I do find it a little bit quicker to do it like that. Although with this, with the fact that the, the motor does move this head up and down slowly, 
yeah, it would have been cool if this just had like a, a little knob at the top that you could actually just manually move this up and down. That would be pretty cool to be able to override the motor that is in this. And just a few other little annoying things, the controls to move the laser head up and down at the bottom here. It's just essentially like a little, little touch surface that you just press. The problem with it is that it's just a flat screen. Uh, you, if you just reach behind it, I don't really know whereabouts it is and where the arrows are. It would have been nice if they had some sort of tactile feel to them so you know what is the up and down arrow. Another issue that I had, I'm not sure if this is going to be the same for everyone. I'm used to kind of like pressing start in the software and then coming over to the machine and having to manually confirm that I want to start the job. With this, you literally just press start on Lightburn and the thing starts. Now I'm sure if you are used to that way of working, uh, it will be fine. Let's go over the accessories. I'll start with the rotary. I had no issues using it and setting it up, as I said, was very nice and easy. I like the, uh, the use of the manual knob to raise the arm up and down. Uh, all you do is you put your spirit level, which, which comes with it, on top of your object and you use the knob to raise that supporting arm up and down uh, to get it level and then that's pretty much it, you're good to go. With the slide extension, it worked fine, I had no issues with it. Um, you got a very nice large plate to work with. This is not actually the, the size that you can engrave on this. It's only 100 mil in the X uh, and it's 300 in the Y, but it does give you a nice big space to work with, which is really handy actually, because then you can get your work holding all around the material that you need. You get a nice good hold and then you can obviously run your job. Let's talk about uh, the software. So I was using uh, Lightburn to get this up and running. Uh, that is my preferred software of choice. I didn't have too many issues, but you know, it, it does take some getting used to. You do select the various different accessories within the console, and then you essentially just right click on those buttons to input specific settings. You do have to keep on changing the, uh, the device size, so the actual bed size that is reflected in Lightburn. You have to keep on inputting that when you are switching between uh, the various different accessories. I think though, if you could just set up some macros or something like that to access these commands and these settings a little bit easier, that would probably make your life much, much easier. And just recently I got a stream deck actually for uh, downstairs. And I think if you had a little stream deck for just for Lightburn, it would probably make using the software so much better. So I think I might actually do that in the future. And as mentioned previously, you know, in terms of repeatability and jigs and those type of things, especially with a slider, I mean, it just essentially rests against this second row of screws and you just use some corner uh, brackets to align it. I just 3D printed this, uh, this jig, which will just help me to align on the x-axis where, where the slider needs to go. And then with the y-axis, all you do is you just turn on the focusing and you just essentially make sure that that dot is not over the edge uh, in the y-axis. It would have been great to see a little bit more kind of repeatability kind of built into that. So let's conclude. Is this for everyone? I don't think so. I think for absolute beginners, I would probably rather have something that was a little bit more easier to use. That was definitely a little bit more safer. I'd really prefer a fully enclosed machine that can be used as semi-enclosed when you are using the accessories. If you're someone that has used laser engravers before, maybe you've got you know an enclosure, you've got fume extraction, those type of things. I think you will be able to get by with this. I think I think the biggest pro for this is the cost of it, especially when you compare what I feel is probably the closest competitor, which would probably be the the X Tool F1. If you look at the price of the X Tool F1 with these two equivalent accessories, you are looking at about two thousand dollars. Now the the standard package for the Nano Pro, which is the 12 watt version, so it's a little bit more powerful than the, the F1. You get the rotary, you get the slide, you get the 12 watt, and that is $1,300. I mean, you could spend the $700 on an enclosure and a really good fume extractor, which for me, you know, are really, really important because as I said, when you use accessories with all of these type of machines, you know, from whatever brand it is, you know, unless it's fully enclosed, as soon as you start using accessories with these things, it, it becomes just an open frame machine or, you know, it's semi, semi enclosed. So yeah, you know, I could maybe spend $700 maybe doing that. So hopefully you found this review useful. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. But that is it for today. I will catch you later.